Hey, my name is Sydney. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. If you're new here, what we talk about on this channel is all things Facebook ads or meta ads. And today I wanna to talk to you about whether you should be using dynamic creative for your lead generation campaigns. Dynamic creative can also be called DCT if you've seen that, or now it's also being called flexible ads because the whole dynamic creative name, I guess the setting, the, the way that you see it or have been seeing it is now going to be called flexible ads. So whether you should be using DCT, dynamic creative or flexible ads for your lead generation campaigns. So if you're actually generating leads. So I really wanna go into detail about why so you fully understand the reason and not just because, oh, I don't like using it. There really is a reason, especially for lead generation campaign. This advice and these tips are actually different if you're an e-com business and I, in that case, I actually do like using dynamic creative in certain cases, but this is specifically for lead generation campaigns. If you should be using the dynamic creative testing or the flexible ads for just your campaign structure. Now, when it comes to a lead generation, there are use cases where you should or shouldn't use it. And I'll give you my explanation of why I would or wouldn't use it, but let's go through some vocabulary first, then we'll get into those use cases and you can make that decision for yourself depending on where you're at in your advertising journey. All right, so let's first cover what dynamic creative are. So I'm inside of the ad set section right now of a campaign. Now, if you are not familiar, familiar with setting up a campaign or even just like the insides of ads manager, maybe go watch another video but we're gonna be inside of the ad set of an actual live campaign that we have for one of our clients. And we have here this option, dynamic creative. Provide creative elements such as images, headlines, and will automatically generate combinations optimized for your audience. Variations include different formats, templates, or audio based on one or more elements. Now, when we turn that on at the ad level, we can upload up to 10 different images when we typically do recommend three creatives, two primary texts, or two to three primary texts, and two to three headlines, rather than having one, two, three, four, five, you know, up to however many ads that you want as each individual ads. And then each one of these individual ads has three primary text and there are two to three primary text and two to three headlines. So when we choose this option here, it essentially all of your creatives become one ad and Facebook decides which one to show. In this situation where we don't have it selected, they're all their own separate ads and in a way they kind of do compete against each other, but ultimately we're trying to find winners. So that is what dynamic creative is and recently what is coming out is that it's not at the ad set part that you choose it it's actually becoming uh, a setting at the ad level called flexible ads and all that that's not ruled out for everyone and it's not either in this account but that's what flexible ads or dynamic creative is and when we say dct that's dynamic creative testing so when you do test new creatives you're using the, the dynamic creative feature all right now let's also talk about different ways of setting up your campaign because that's going to be important for what I'm going to be talking about in the uh, second half of this video. So when we talk about a lead generation campaign, we've told Facebook, hey, I want to optimize for leads. I want people to tell me that they're interested in my service. And we can either do that by setting it up with uh, generating leads on your website. So on a landing page, uh, using the instant form feature. So that'd be someone is on Facebook and they see a form on Facebook. They fill out their information on Facebook or Instagram, of course, and then they become a lead there. And then there are some other options here like Messenger, WhatsApp, calls and apps. I'm mainly gonna be referring to these two top options. That's really the only types that we are running for our clients are that I really recommend. Um, as the other ones, I would say are less popular and they don't generate as good of results just by the times that we've tested it and what all our marketers are saying as well. So we're gonna be talking about mostly website lead forms and instant forms on Facebook. Now, with whatever option that you choose here at the ad set level of where you want your lead to go, this is generally the process. You have an ad, you put together there are a few images, primary text, and headlines that are like, hey, I offer this service. Let us know if you are interested. The end user on Facebook or Instagram sees your ad. They say, hey, I'm interested. They fill out the form because they ultimately want to be contacted. So a user 
becomes a lead. And ultimately that is what Facebook is optimizing for, is for people to fill out a form. Now, when someone fills out a form, we get those metrics directly inside of Ads Manager. So when they fill out a website lead form, that's gonna be on your website. We're gonna be using the pixel to send that information back to Facebook for it to know who became a lead and what ad generated those results. And when we're using an instant form that is happening directly on Facebook. So you actually don't need a pixel for this because the event actually happens directly on Facebook. So it is a little bit less of a friction for that user to become a lead. But in either way, what is happening is Facebook knows that someone filled out a form and they can tell you what ad did that. So. In this situation where we have a regular campaign not using dynamic creative testing, let's look at those results. All right. So in this situation, we have the results here and we have website leads because that is what we are optimizing for. And I can see which one of these ads is generating the best cost per result based on the creative. So the image or video, the text, including the primary text and the headline. And we can see those results directly inside of ads manager here. Now, what's important to know is that when someone becomes a lead, something else needs to happen. They need to go through a sales follow-up process. Often that includes a phone call, an email, maybe even a text message. Now, if you are not familiar with the best sales follow-up process, I would recommend that you go check out another video that talks about the best sales follow-up process. So once this user becomes a lead, you now need to contact them. However, the ads that generate leads inside of your ads manager. So what you're seeing as the first step of someone filling out a form, this actually doesn't necessarily mean that those people are also going to become paying clients. There are a few steps that need to happen in order for that lead to become an actual paying customer. Now, in order for us to see what ad generates actual customers, what we do, and there's a few different ways of analyzing that data, but you'll see that in these regular ads here, if we go to the edit ad section, we have the option here to build URL parameters. And essentially what this does is that it creates a piece of code, essentially, you put at the end of your URL. So your URL is www.website.com slash, and this is gonna go question mark UTM equals, and it's going to start a piece. It's going, to, it's going to have a sentence that different platforms can read to tell us where that person came from. All right. So if we go build a URL parameter, you'll see we have campaign source, campaign medium, campaign name, and campaign content. So typically what I recommend when people are launching an ad is that they do build a URL parameter because in order for us to see who becomes a client or a paying customer from which ad, we need to be able to tell where that person came from, including the campaign, the platform, the ad set, and the ad. And this is how we can identify that. So in this example, we're not using the bottom URL parameters here. We've actually done it in a slightly different way, but I would recommend that you use it at the bottom. We've actually added it directly to our website URL. So let me just put that in here and I will just paste it into the bar. Okay. So you'll see that we have campaign ID. And so in order for us to see what campaign ID they came from, what campaign name, what ad set they came from and what the name of that was and what ad they came from and even where the placement was. So like the different placements on Facebook or Instagram, like news feeds, stories, all that information is put into this little piece of code that Facebook sends to our website. And then our website will send that back and we can keep that in our CRM. And I'll show you different ways that you can look at that to see what ad generated the leads, but also what ads generated real customers. Cause we are going to have a drop off. Not every single person who becomes a lead is actually going to become a customer. So all this to say that we need to add UTMs into our ads in order for us to know what ads generated the customers. So when we have a regular campaign set up without using dynamic creative or without using the flexible ads feature, we know what ad they can come from and what ad set and what campaign. Now, in order to analyze this data, this is how we can actually have a look at this. So for example, this is a client where they were generating leads on Facebook. So let's say you have a hundred leads, but then the next step for them is to actually book a call. So with Facebook instant forms, you can book a call directly. So the next step was to call them, 
send them an email and send them a text for them to actually book a call. And this report here tells us who of those people booked a call and where they came from. So you can see we have the campaign, ad set, and add. And this is a Looker Studio report that we've created. So we're sending this information back because that is where they are coming from, what campaign they're coming from, what ad set they're coming from, and what ad. And we're able to see this information because we're using those UTMs. Now, another way that you can also analyze that data is by just putting them into a Google Sheet. So in this case, the Looker Studio report um, is actually taking the information from the Google Sheet. But here as well, you, we have the, the actual customer or the lead that ended up booking a call. So not all the leads also book a call. So keep that in mind. And then when they do book a call, they show up on this sheet because I want to know of all the leads who actually booked a call. That is the next step. And you can see all the different names here, the campaign they came from, the medium, and the actual ad. So UTM content would be the ad. And we can track all of our actual booked call leads that we actually get to talk to. We can track them back to what campaign, ad set, and ad they came from. So when we're using a regular campaign structure, it's really easy to track which ads generated what leads or what book calls or even what deals. You can always track them back because their first name, last name, and email have been tracked within whatever software you're using to capture that information. And so it's really easy to see what ad is generating what result. But now let me show you what happens when we use a DCT or a dynamic creative test or a flexible ad with our lead generation campaign. So I have this campaign that we ran to generate leads. I named this ad set, you know, woman new collage DCT to identify that in this ad set, we were running a dynamic creative test. And then inside of this dynamic creative test, it essentially comes up as one ad. We know if there's three different creatives inside of this dynamic creative test, all right? So, but it only shows up as one. So when we add the UTMs, our website or our CRM or our, you know, Google Sheet, it sees it show up as just one ad. And you can see in that time period, we generated 13 on Facebook leads. However, like I said, not every on Facebook lead or website lead that initially tells you they're interested is actually going to book a call, talk with you, be interested, or even close a deal. And so let me show you what happens when this DCT collage, which has three different images in it, shows up in our reporting using our UTM. So I'll go back over to the reporting and I just searched up DCT because I know that that's in the ad set. So we have one, two, three, four. In that time frame. I know that that is the time frame. So of those 13 people, only four of them booked the calls, but I don't know which ad they came from because these are all showing up as the same ad, but there's three in there. And typically when we're running a test, there's gonna be one winner and probably two losers, most likely. This is why it's really important for us to test different creatives all of the time, because we want to learn and see what works best for our audience, for our company, for our brand, so that we can learn from there. But when we're using DCT or Dynamic Creative, we can't tell which of the actual creatives I put in there is generating the results. Whereas if you see over here in this one, uh, we got, you know, we were also testing out collages and I, it's basically the same ads that are in new collage GCT and newer collages because I had to restructure it. You'll see that this ad, four corners, USA and colors, and then newer collages. We got a tic-tac-toe looking one. We got collage, orange collage hexagon. I can see that those people who actually showed interest came from those very specific ads. So all this to say is that when you're running a lead generation campaign, it's not like e-com where they go and just buy directly from your website. And whether that ad is working or not, you'll know right away. There are multiple steps that happen in the sales follow-up process that would disqualify a lot of people. And we can keep track of who is converting from which ad by using UTMs. And you can use your UTMs either in a Google Sheet, Looker Studio, in your CRM. There's also a, a different ways of reporting that for you to know what to do next. What ads should I keep running? Which ones should I turn off? But when we put them all together inside of a DCT, we don't know which of the three, four different ads that you've launched is actually the one generating the deals overall. Because in this case, if there is one that is not performing well, so actually I'll open that one, newer collages. I'll go newer ad set name contains newer collages. So you'll see from this reporting, let's say, you know, these ones right here, they came from that ad set that I just showed. And we got, you know, the, the different ways or the different ads that are actually generating those results. 
then we can come back over here and I could tell that this one obviously did not generate any leads, but this one, the tic-tac-toe is generating the most amount of leads and it also is at a, a lower cost. Because again, just because the leads are coming in from a certain ad doesn't mean that they're actually generating the sale in the end. And often what I find is that a cheap cost per lead doesn't necessarily mean a cheap closed deal or a, um, someone actually becoming a customer. There is a, there's a very fine balance between the two and it's finding that sweet spot. All this to answer the question of whether you should be using dynamic creative testing for your Facebook ads if you're generating leads or using the lead generation objective is I would actually recommend it again against it because we really need that data to see where those results came from further down in the sales process and it doesn't happen in the first seven days. That's, that's often the case where that person is not going to become a customer in the first seven days because that is talking to them, deciding, maybe you're playing phone tag. And in order for us to track where that lead came from initially, we can't tell that by using dynamic creative testing. We only can see what ad set they came from. Now the argument could be made that if you want to see what ad is producing the most amount of leads like on Facebook or website leads directly, you could use the breakdown feature. The breakdown feature is an option inside of your ads manager that can tell you a lot of different things. So you can break it down by you know, a lot of different options here. So definitely check that out. But if you wanted to see what image or you know creative was performing best, I could type in image and of the dynamic creative options in here, it'll tell me where those results came from. Now, in this case, it actually is breaking down wh which ad or what creative generated how many leads, but often these numbers are off and they're not always accurate. So let's say for example, I've seen cases where there's been like 114 leads and I only see where 75 of them came from. Not sure why, I guess we just couldn't tell, you know, where they came from or what from what ad. I'm not sure why that all that data doesn't get shown, but this happens, happens very, very often where not all of the leads get broken down. And again, I'm gonna reiterate that just because an ad generates a lead and maybe a good cost per, like cost per lead on Facebook or from your lead form, doesn't mean that that is actually going to generate a sale or a deal or a closed one or an actual customer. And that's why we need to look at the different steps and see where those leads are coming from which ad. And then in addition to that, because we are using a custom event over here called book call, it doesn't break down which ad those booked calls come from. It can see that there was four, but it doesn't know which one. So the, again, another reason why I don't love using dynamic creative tests for a lead generation. So what I would recommend instead of using dynamic creative tests, if you're running lead generation. So instead of having a DCT ad set with a DCT ad and three images and two to three primary tags and two to three headlines all as one ad, what I would recommend instead is to take those three assets of three different images or videos, break them out into their own singular ads with the same primary text and the same headlines and run it that way so you can get a more granular breakdown of the metrics so you can ultimately make better decisions about what ads to keep on, to keep off and where to go from there. So. That is my answer is that I actually prefer to use a regular setup, but I have given you a full explanation as to why so that you understand. Of course, you can make your own decisions for yourself. And if you have a better way of figuring out where, you know, that, that lead is coming from, then that's amazing. But it's really, really important to note that you should not only be basing your results with the first step in that sales process, which would be the cost per lead or the cost per website lead, because just because they're a lead doesn't mean that they're actually going to become a customer. There's people who are just looking for information. There are people who maybe even accidentally filled out the form. That definitely happens a lot. And so you want to filter out who becomes a customer and how to track that back to which ads you were running at that time. So that's it for today's video. I hope that cl helped clarify whether you should be using Dynamic Creative or not with a flexible ad, whatever they're gonna be called at this point that you're watching. And uh, hope, hopefully you can make that decision for yourself. But really, if you want to be more data driven, you're really not gonna be able to use the dynamic creative testing because the UTMs do not identify which individual ad they came from. So that is it for today's video. Hope that helped and I will see you in the next video.